is performance is the willing acceptance of the emperor. Um, I was thinking more so in terms of like local officials. Like, did they sort of have like this was the same like idea like, in place? Like, okay, you're like you um, you rule us in a way, but at the same time, if you don't, um, uh, if you're like unqualified or if you um, if you do wrong by us, then we have like the um, the ability to the ability rebel, to rebel, ability yeah. to even. Yeah. Is it sort of the same idea? It's the same idea. Just a small scale. Yes. Yeah, it's the same idea on a small scale. This is predicated on a basic moral principle, uh, the idea of reciprocity. The, the people who are more powerful, more influential, have more access to information and ideas, ought to be more obligated for the well-being of the society. Therefore, the emperor is very consequential, just like the president's action is very, very consequential. But the ministers, the local officials, everyone should be understood in that context. So you never impose even moral ideas upon the people. The people ought to be able to survive. You should provide, you should uh, uh, the people should enjoy a secure environment, should have basic food, and the people should flourish if possible. That's uh, um, considered as the success of the emperor. And as to some of the people, you know, this open, some of the people become elevated to be officials. The more they become influential, the more become self-conscious of their action, the more obligated they are. There's one exception. Uh, people become secure if they have permanent property. If they have land, they have house, then they become secure. Only those people who are cultivated as the Junzi or as the princely person, as gentleman, as the authoritative person, or of, as a profound person, is able to do things for the people in general, even though they themselves are property stricken. That requires a certain kind of self-cultivation and self-consciousness. So the organic universe and also organic human is highly differentiated. Doesn't mean that every human being is the exact the same. Each and every human being is different. And yet each and every human being contributes to this harmonious process. And of course, those who are more powerful, their actions are more consequential. You have a question, too. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I understood correctly. Um, I think you mentioned that if a ruler is a tyrant, or if he's tyrannous, tyrannical, um, heaven will punish him? Uh, both. You see, the idea is heaven sees as the people see. Okay. That heaven hears as the people hear. So if the ruler becomes tyrannical, heaven would not accept the person as the ruler. So the mandate of heaven, which is given to the ruler, will be withdrawn. And yet, it's much more serious in the human world. Uh, let's say those people who are powerful in influencing the, uh, the ruler, almost like the minister, or, most, uh, or like the cabinet or ministers, are able to influence the president. You know, a beautiful statement in Mencius. If the ruler treats the ministers politely or in a benevolent spirit, the rulers will respect, or the ministers will respect the ruler and will be obedient. If the ruler treats the ministers indifferently, the ministers will not show any kind of respect. If the ruler treats the people like dogs, in other words, uh, totally oppressive. Then the ministers have two choices. One is to leave. I don't want to have anything to do. The other one is to mobilize the ministers to get rid of the, uh, get rid of the ruler. So there's a beautiful statement, a ruler was executed. So one challenge to Mencius is, how could these ministers executed the ruler. These ministers were totally unloyal. These ministers were, uh, shouldn't be considered ministers according 
to the rectification of names. They ought to act in the, in the spirit of the ministers. Manchus' response is very simple. The ruler failed to follow the, the rules of the uh, rectification of names. So he's no longer a ruler. He's simply a lonely person. A lonely person did something extremely brutal to the people, so it is, all, it is of course justified. There's one term which is now used as revolution, Gomi, in modern Chinese. This originally occurred in Manchus, which means to eliminate or to change the mandate of heaven. It's almost like a collaboration between heaven and the people in general. So I guess my, my confusion is, it, does heaven have, heaven is not omnipotent, right? So heaven is not? Omnipotent. No. Right? So does heaven take an active role in rectifying situations? You see, that's the question. That's what I mean. Yeah. You can be active. You cannot be omnipotent. In other, in other words, if something horrible happens, like in the period of the Nazi, heaven couldn't do anything because this is what uh, be done by humans. But heaven cared for. And in other words, heaven could function in a very subtle way by caring for the people. Something may happen. And human beings do not exactly know what heaven will do. But they all know that heaven is caring. Just like in the Christian tradition, no matter what, love, uh, God is loving. Now, but in the Confucian tradition, it's more realistic. It's more practical. I would say it's more understandable. That is, the people can mobilize themselves. In other words, if something happened in a destructive force because human beings, human beings ought to be able to face up to that challenge. Of course, now, if, you, if we look at the current situation, the responsibility of the human for Earth, we call it care for Earth, is a positive force in changing the cause of action. And yet, human beings are also responsible for the destruction of Earth. If the power of destruction was stronger 